interesting uses. It's also probably the most practical, oldest of all weapons from Robin Hood time, I guess, King Arthur, you know, back to the Roman times, the Greeks. There was always someone carrying a staff. We do uh, 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 cotton with these, of course, but we also do bote bow, which is an actual application of one step or fighting or combat training with it. Now, one of the reasons you learn how to fight with this weapon <laughs> is so that you're comfortable in case somebody came at you with the weapon. Now, there's some basic parts of the, the application of it. It's nothing more than just kind of rock it for a while. You guys can see better this way. See, he's a lot thicker than I am. <laughs> my wife doesn't call me that. She says I'm thick. I know she's talking about my body. Now, here we go. Over here, and we're in the top of this move. That's one aspect of it. Of course, in the street, the real aspect of what I'd be doing would be more like this. Hit his hand. I see. Right? Don't have too many students if you do that. So uh, we have to practice. <laughs> we become a little bit more precise if you come here and not hit him. Where you can go to the outside and the inside. And control him. I see. Okay. Now, you can be where he wants Now, control and trust is a very important part of this. <laughs> so now, if you just want to take it away, of course, he can let go at any point. Maybe he can. Well, anyway, it's about controlling. All right? All right. Yeah, you need to be right in behind <laughs> So the side, maybe it was always a weapon. Gosh, you can see it in the Egyptian times on some of the hieroglyphs. You can see it in the Chinese time on some of the statues. Similar type weapon, European, similar type weapon, maybe with the sword involved in it, sharp blade. But the Okinawans predominantly are credited for putting it into use from a farming tool. They're a little bit different. The original ones in Okinawa came in two pieces. This web portion here, the handle part, the prongs. It slid over this and then was tied off with leather. It was the original for the purpose of it. Remember that the Japanese occupied Okinawa, the Chinese occupied Okinawa, Korea occupied Okinawa. Okinawa is a culture that has never started a war. They will get upset if you call them Japanese, even though the Japanese control them, because they're Okinawa. More people in Okinawa live to be over 100 years old than anywhere else in the world now. Most man in the world turned 114 last weekend and lived in Okinawa. They believe that their culture is not only their diet, but it's because they're very passive people. So they took farming tools, being very clever, after Japanese occupied them, took all their weapons away from them, Chained one knife out in the middle of the courtyard and said, there's where you're going to cut your fruit and vegetables and your meat. Well, everybody's going to share that knife. But no one's going to take it because it's on a chain. And so they took farming tools, converted them into a defensive tactic tool, something they could use if someone came at them with a samurai sword. You don't find as many metal objects in weaponry in Okinawa because there's not too many mountains. None to be exact. <laughs> Just heels. So mining is not an ability and they get the metal forging it from other sources outside of Okinawa. So again, with a similar type of direction, you can use the prong to protect yourself. If you can't poke at it, you can use the prong to protect the block, which is controlling striking. You can use it controlling. All about grappling. Out of control. Not too many students left after you do this a dozen times. So, by the time you start with this side, you hopefully have good control tactics. There's a variation to the side. Nintes. Okay. They are a variation. They're part of the gaff 
that goes on the end of the spear, which I'll talk about when I get over here at the bow a little bit. But they were taken off and used then as a defensive weapon. So they had to take them first all together. And it became a grappling. talk a little bit more about some of these other <coughs> actually king. As I told one of the young boys over there, it's really an open element like my oh, oh. word. <laughs> but they use the king. As a matter of fact, uh, I just received one from Okinawa front. I had a friend after about three years finding this one. But anyway, it's a Okinawa samurai sword, which is all hidden in a cane. It's all wooden. And they would use a cane for a lot of purposes. This is a, a, just an older type of cane. It's not one of them practical ones you see today at a health supply store or whatever, right? It's just something that they use. They use it for a different type of music. Mostly from a pressure point. exception of pineapple, that's pretty much what Louisiana grows. Funny how you want to some of their old farming tools go back a couple hundred years. Very similar to some of these tools that the Okinawans use. This one has a lot of the fishing tools, <laughs> kind of a gaff type of thing. If you can imagine getting one of them big old tuna right off that edge, gaffing it, pulling it up. But it also helped push you away from the dock, get your little, like a Pedro boat, little bass boat that's real thin and long. They have in Okinawa. This also became a good way to get someone with a samurai sword or on the back of a horse out of reaching, out of getting no Japanese like to come in and occupy it and bring some of the horses. This has a very unique purpose as well. Control, control, and there. Aha. Not everybody wishes to control him. See, I get one prong in his muscle, one on his wrist. And then I can just sit back over here. And hold him in for a minute. Uh, oh. <laughs> I have to go to work on my But it still has a practicality to the boat. Side. 
They have a little shorter version, but they use a similar thing. Send them a weapon to the bow. sell for about 25. Okay, martial arts you can get, get live for that. But anyway, it's still you cut grass over there. You know, how would you like to do your yard like this? Well, this is a pretty good sized grass yard in Okinawa. <laughs> so that's not too bad. Yeah, it's kind of like English. All right, the tala is another instrument that yeah. is used pretty different depending on the art you're with. We have five points on here. Somebody. Doesn't matter. Either. Somebody. And so, it's not strictly just a blocking, 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 striking, grappling, okay? But it has other uses as well. Like, not other than the blues. You notice the circling motion, guys, going around. Other variations of them, different commas, tompa kanda, swinging commas as well, going to the tompa. Right? Many people think from a police officer's point of view. Maybe blocking here, blocking here, blocking here. Okay, now it's pretty is a little bit different. More of a grappling, more of a control. So much a swinging instrument, more of a handcuff type of instrument. Where you can control. Okay. Ultimately, these are fist load weapons. And you figure out what this was used for. They didn't have too many horses there, but what they did is take the stirrups, turn them into brass knuckles. Stirrups on a horse. This was part of the bit. Went into the horse. Again, they didn't have too much metal, so. The big horse over there is kind of like a big cow. It's about 300 pounds. They have real small. These are kind of fist load. You, you girls, when I teach a woman's self defense class, I say, look, you need to protect yourself. Take a rubber band, a ballpoint pin, put them on like this. Now you have all the strength you want to poke someone. But can you figure out, besides the fact that if he's striking at me, this just protects my hands. It allows me to put a little pressure on him. Put a little pressure, put a little pressure, okay? Can you imagine what they were used for? It's a fishing bobber. Goes on a bunch, a bunch of these go on a net. Keep the net kind of floating up there. So it's part of a fishing bobber. <coughs> Lots of different little tools turn into weapons. Ultimately, why do you learn to do this? Well, if someone comes at you with a pistol and you've never held a pistol or a rifle, you've never held one, and someone says to you, 
Oh, is this thing loaded? He's pretty insecure about being around a loaded weapon. But if he's held one in his hands, he goes, oh, I see what this is. Safety is right here. Okay, it's loaded. All right, good. He's comfortable. He moves on. We practice the weapons for two purposes. One is to keep the tradition alive. Wonderful purpose. Keep it alive. Tradition, just like sword fencing, uh, six-gun shooting, archery. We keep the old art alive. It also has a weight training. It is our weight training. Same movements we use in, in our karate, we use in the weapons, so it's a weight trainer. But if you're comfortable with a weapon, you will not be intimidated by a weapon. It will not scare you. So if someone comes at you in the street, most likely it's going to be a club. It might be a, a longer stick, but then you're a little more comfortable in handling it. Whatever you guys like. Oh, wait a minute. Double teaming me again. Okay. So as they're coming at you, you can always do it. <laughs> Back to the more comfortable zone. Okay. Now, help him off the side. <laughs> All right, well, coming at you. Then you can do what you want with it. I can talk to you about that long one. Oh. <laughs> So, each one have a purpose. 